Comments on matters not on the agenda. I have that one. I'm waiting for John though. Oh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> Two. Okay. Go ahead. Get some water. Go ahead, Sean. Um. So I've been working on this fiber stuff, the plan for the fiber, and we had and a call. I, yeah. I missed the meeting. I get it. <laughs> yeah. And I meant to come and meet with you and give you a bigger update. But anyway, this is kind of the summary. Um, so we met with EDA and Jason with Interbell, and who else was on that call? Clint was on that call. Um, so there's EDA funding that could pay for the installation of all the fiber that we've got um, throughout Troy wherever, on the outskirts of Troy, wherever we have access to be able to do that. Um, that funding is through EDA. Right now, they have coronavirus additional funding, which is a 80-20 match instead of a 50-50 match, so that would be the best thing. Um, and as far as I know, the fiber can be part of that match, so that's a big chunk of the match, if not all of it. Um, and then, so we talked about the possibility of being a co-applicant with Interbell, and Interbell can do that because they're a nonprofit, and we're a nonprofit, so uh, that qualifies with EDA funding. They have had EDA funding before, so they have a track record, and EDA likes them. Um, so that is, it would be a, a partnership, this is a big deal uh, that the city has to do to, yeah, uh, would need to approve of, not the second, but something to consider and we'll get more details um, built up in the next few weeks um, with the idea of applying for this grant and then any input is good if uh, I mean, we, we need more information, I think, before the city council can make a good decision on it because we don't really know what it's going to cost yet uh, or what it or how exactly, broad, or what? How broad it's going to go? I how mean, broad how, the is it going to do the city? Is it going to go outside? I think that's up to us if we want it to just be in the city where we already have power customers or in the city and where we already have power customers would make the most sense for billing and just... Mm -hmm. Simple. It would be simple. Uh, and we have 22 miles of fiber. I don't know how far that's going to go with crisscrossing and, you know, building the network. Uh, what else? So, so this partnership, this is, this is the rough outline of what the partnership would be. So, Interbell, would handle all the back end kind of stuff, customer service, billing, that kind of thing. And then uh, the city would need to have someone on staff to provide service, you know, when service issues come up um, to be like boots on the ground here. So that, of course, would be paid for by the um, broadband customers. So it would essentially be a Another utility. But he'd be working for the city. Right. That staff for Or it could be contracted. Or a self contract or yeah, something like that? Be, yeah. Um, yeah. So that would be better yet. Right. Yeah. Because insurance, things like that just sure. falls into play. Yeah. It would take some of the pressure off the city. Um, so this would be a, a um, income project where it would be bringing some money into the city. Uh, for Interbell's part of it, they would charge like a flat rate per customer per month to, to pay for their end of it. And then we would determine what, that, what those rates are on our end. So what that difference is, is what we're bringing in. Um, so that's 
the rough idea, I, I could give some more details. I do have some questions, but I'm not a broadband engineer as, as much as I would not enjoy that job. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm trying to wrap my head around it as much as I can. And of course, Jason is super helpful. Clint knows a lot about it. Uh, but it seems like an interesting opportunity, and it's we're in a unique position with this EBA grant, with having Interbell as a nonprofit, with having a city-owned power company. It puts us in a really interesting position. That is this uh, for when they're looking at this in the city? Is it for pole or underground? Um, it could be either. That? It could run either way. That fiber is, you can use that as well. Either way? Yeah. Yeah. Because we have our own pool. Right. Yeah. So that's a, that's a big benefit. Big benefit. Yeah. yeah. And then we don't have to rent pool space from the power company. With the grant, is there any possibility that we could expand even further with bursting more fiber and hit fiber? in the hidden places that don't have, like Lake Creek has probably in it. Yeah, I mean, just it out. similar to how our power reaches outside of city limits. That would just right, be up to it us. Right, but yeah. it doesn't go, yeah. It doesn't go far. It would be Lake nice Creek, to do Lake Creek. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And we get a lot of customers with Lake would. Creek, Cootie yeah. Vista. Oh, yeah. Even just Wilderness Plateau mm -hmm. and Cootie Vista. Mm -hmm. If we can serve right. those two communities, it would be amazing. And if there's a grant involved, I mean, if we were to do something like that because we are adding that utility, now would be the time to do it. Right. That kind of a match. Just yeah. go for the best yeah. of yeah. And, and, and that, so Interbell is looking at the engineering, like a, what they were calling a back of the napkin engineering mm -hmm. estimate, sort of, of, of what that would look like, at least with the Troy Power area. Right. And, um, then we can talk about, based on the fiber we already have, what we would need and what kind of budget to a lot for for this right. grant, whether to move beyond that, and what the city's comfortable with, mm -hmm. um, with managing, even with Interbell in the background doing mm -hmm. the lake work, right. it's still, you know, it's the same. Oh yeah, but it's also, it's like the power, the power department. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's it can it can hold its own employees once right. it's going. Right. It would and pay still for bring in our revenue. It would still bring in revenue, and mm -hmm. um, because that fiber we have is so beefy, it's way more than we would need for this. So uh, we could lease out space on that fiber too to other ISPs. Yeah. So that's, that's another revenue producing yep. option. It's not even an option. It's the law because like non-compete stuff with infrastructure. So mm -hmm. if we build the infrastructure and there's availability, we have to be able to lease it out. So that could be good. Well, Montana Sky has the infrastructure in it. Yeah, they have so, theirs, but I don't know if it's more than they need or what. Yeah. Well, because if Interbell, I'd be interested to see what Interbell is going to charge on a monthly rate, and then we yeah. tack on ours, and then if Montana Sky comes in, because they're an independent, not mm -hmm. Interbell in the city of Troy, right. so we may not even, we may do it all or not. Well, that's what we need to know. Yeah. We need to know those details. Mm -hmm. And so Interbell is working on their end of it. And and there is this benefit of two nonprofits coming together to offer a service like that. Yeah. I mean, it's similar to why we have low electric rate. We're not profiting yeah. off of it. So it would, yeah, I don't know what those rates would be right now, and I think that's very much up to what Interbell would charge and, and then what, what we would charge. And then also what the monthly costs for the, the back load to get to Troy. So um, that would be maybe some quarterly. So um, there's not a sure number for that, but it's something around 3,300 a month. So that would be, you know, it's that's like the base, the base cost, and then Annabelle's cost, and then all that divvied up by however many customers. 
Well, in a, in a way, I think, we're not getting away from, but remember when we first, a couple of years ago, when we were talking about, we were trying to reach people, I think Chris will get into that, yeah. out there. Right. And uh, by doing that, it would be giving us more people into our community, mm -hmm. you know, more money into our community. By reaching them and getting small business to come in and work from yeah. home. And uh, to centralize, it, but I also knew we were talking about making Troy the hub. Mm -hmm. Well, you make Troy the hub, and you said we got plenty for that. And then, like Crystal brings up, how can we then move and get out to where we need to bring people in, the small businesses and things right. like that? And maybe we want to look at like this central business district doing that in Troy, and then going if we could go out to Cookie Vista and Florida. So, for maybe after, like for businesses and stuff. You know, we have technically internet in Troy. Yeah, but yeah. It's, yep. We all know. Like, well, it's all good. Like, you, you bring well, up uh, Montana Sky. And Montana Sky is doing a lot. Yeah, it's yeah. just, you know, we got a limited amount of customers and we got Montana Sky, mm -hmm. we got Zipley eventually, and now we Maybe. got the, yeah. um, the yeah. other EL automation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they're kind of taking a different approach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all a different approach, but we yeah. still only have. Yeah. Couple thousand people to deal with. So how many, how many times can the pie be split? It, it in the turns into a price competition and service competition. Yeah. You know, whoever can provide the service and the the best price, that's who I'm going to go with. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. But if we're the yeah. only sole entity, right? In Montana skies, Kalispell, mm -hmm. Libby, Troy, yeah. everywhere where they're at, their right. their whole customer base is. Well, and maybe and even if we got the the infrastructure in. And installed and figured out what we wanted to do, then we could lease it to Montana Sky. If it didn't right. fit for us to be the provider, we're still making mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. right. fees off right. of the line. And, yeah. yeah, so they would, it's like a 17% below market cost is what we could lease it at. So it's still mm -hmm. good. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. That's what I like. There's a, play, there's a company called Iron. I don't know if you've heard of that. Mm -hmm. They're in Montana, I'm not sure where at, but they're in Idaho as well. But they're doing fiber strictly between PSAPs and um, colleges. Hmm. So, and then they're making it to where if you're hooked up in Bonner's Ferry, you can look at Boise's stuff hmm. through their fiber, but they're turning in a big deal in Seattle. Oh. Hmm. I don't huh. know where they're at over here yet, but I know they're here. Huh. Yeah, there, and there will be more. There's oh, yeah. going to be more. That's, yeah. yeah. Was there a time frame with any of these guys? <sighs> well, the Kirk at EDA said the COVID money, there's a, there's not a time limit on it, but it won't run out. Mm -hmm. It's like a first come, first serve kind of thing. So he recommended the beginning of August to get the application together. And I just, that's, that's, that's a little that's real quick. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, I don't know, and, and Jason at Interval was finishing up a project. So, I think like next week he said he'd be able to get to the back of the napping engineering, which is required for this application. Um, that'll give us a better idea mm -hmm. of what we're looking at. And then, what I was thinking is we could work to get an application put together. And Aaron, I think, can help with part of the Rockies. Um, to get an application put together, Kate Arkham said she would help with that too. And then we can all look at that and decide if we want to. Well, that's with Aaron? Um, well, she can help with the application. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then we can look at that at our office meeting. But I guess what I was wondering if, you know, if there's any problem with going forward with the application at least. Cost and availability, I guess, is what we got going on. Mm -hmm. But I think we're going to have to have another council meeting before we ever do that so we have information. Mm -hmm. Right, so yeah. We're not so I think that's a vague. I vague. Will, well, yeah, it's vague right now, but I can bring. Well, hopefully we'll have a draft by the work meeting. Well, there's got to be pretty concrete numbers there. Yeah. That 
what we, we all have, have to look at. Yeah. 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 yeah, he knows that. Though. Yeah. He knows that. Yeah. And and Jason's done this before, so yeah. it's not new to him. I mean, he hasn't done this with the city power company before, but uh, he's done EDA grants before. And, yeah. So he'll he'll have the details. Well, I, I, I don't think any of these grants are going to dismantle right now because of what's going on and now, you know, in different areas of the country. They're still going to put out their infrastructure, yeah. different things like that. So, And there will still be the 50-50 grant available. So even if the COVID option goes away, the 50-50 um, match option will still be there. So it's not as great, but... Well, if they let us use the fiber as part of our right. cost, that's going to yeah. be that's a big deal. Yeah. Because if you look at that fiber yeah. and what it really costs, right. we're not saying what we paid for it, but what it costs. Mm -hmm. It could essentially it. cost us nothing to build yeah. a fiber network for sure. Yeah. Yeah. With that, Except for the freight, the freight yeah. cost. Because <laughs> we're sitting on over $125,000 worth of yeah. wire. Yeah. It's donated to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that seems to be a pretty good option to me. But yeah. of course, we need more. So. Uh, yeah. Good information, though. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Turn that in or give give us coffee. Or... This, yeah, this is my official coffee. Well, that's right. <laughs> 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 <There's mine. laughs> yeah, that we can make something out of that. Yeah. So I hope you got something out of that video. If you didn't, feel free to give a thumbs down. If you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. You can subscribe over here, check out some other videos down here, and you can always reach out to me at ben at nwmtnow.org. Thank you.